Have you ever heard of Vanilla OS? It's a relatively new Linux distribution that I've been turning at recently. In this video, we are going to show you how you can install it alongside Windows 11. Vanilla OS is all about simplicity, security, and different approach to computing with its immutable file system and its custom package manager APX. It's making computing even more exciting. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here I am on my Windows system. Let's take a quick look at my system specification. As you can see, I'm running Windows 11 on Intel i3 8 gen processor with 8 GB of RAM. Now let's check the disk partition. So uh, I'm gonna close this and open disk management. Here we go. I have two disks, one is hard disk and another is SSD. We are going to install uh, vanilla OS on SSD alongside Windows 11. Uh, so first we need to create an empty partition to install vanilla OS. I'm gonna delete all the uh, partitions to create a 100 GB space, unallocated space for, uh, for the installation of vanilla OS. Now I have set aside 100 GB of unallocated space for this purpose. Now let's take next step uh, is to download the required files. You need to download Rufus, uh, of and of course vanilla OS iOS file. Rufus is used to create portable pen drive. So uh, download these two files from the description link. Uh, so let me open Rufus. Uh, make sure you have connected your pen drive and please ensure it's empty because this process will erase all your data. So let me connect my pen drive first. Here we go. My pen drive is connected. Let's check in file manager. As you can see, this is my pen drive. I'm gonna uh, in, uh, make this bootable for the vanilla OS. Let's close this and here we need to select uh, vanilla OS IOC file. Here we have, click on open. And guys, don't do anything here. Just click on the start button and click on yes. And guys, uh, this process initiate the process of creating bootable pen drive for vanilla OS. It, it might take few moments, so be patient. I'm gonna fast forward the video to make it short. Our pen drive is now become bootable. Uh, you can close this and let's take a quick look at the files. So let me open file manager. And here we have, uh, these are the files which are required uh, for the installation of vanilla OS. Now let's close this and it's time to get ready your computer for the vanilla OS. Here is what uh, you, we need to do is shut down our computer. So let me shut down it and we will enter our system into the BIOS. Uh, if you have a Lenovo laptop, then you can do by pressing F2. Uh, if you have a different brand, then you can check uh, the check the key uh, on Google. Uh, so it is often displayed on the screen during boot. Once uh, you're in the BIOS, go to security and we need to disable BIOS. We need to disable secure boot. So here we have secure boot. I already disabled it. Uh, so you can disable it from here. Now uh, let's uh, boot the system into the boot menu. First go to exit, click here and we press yes. And guys, you need to press F2 uh, to boot the system into the boot menu. So our system is now boot into the BIOS. As you can see, multiple boot entries. But these are old entries and I'll clean up later. For now, let's focus on Sendis and click uh, on uh, Sendis boot entry. This is how we initiate the boot process for vanilla OS. Uh, please wait for uh, some time it, as uh, it may take a few minutes. So I'm gonna first of all the video to make it short. Our system is supported into the uh, vanilla OS and we have two options, try and install. Since we are here to install vanilla OS, so go ahead and click on install. And here next, uh, select your preferences for language, keyboard type, region. Choose the option that suits you best.
Now we need to select disk where we want to install vanilla OS. In my case, I'm installing it on my SSD, so I'm gonna select NVMe drive. Click here. Uh, now uh, we are planning to dual board with Windows, so click on manual partitioning. Uh, so let me click on manual partitioning. Now it's time to create partition for vanilla OS. To do this, let's open gpartit. Here we have our unallocated space of uh, 1000 GB. Uh, so right click here uh, and click on new. And guys, guys, it's time to create uh, some necessary partition. First, we will create one GB partition for the EFI system. So uh, select one GB and here uh, file system must be FAT32 and give any name uh, you want. So once it's ready, click on add. EFI partition is now created. Let's create another partition. So right click on analogate space and this time uh, we are going to create boot partition uh, which is same uh, 1 GB partition uh, and the file system is ext4 this time and give any name you want. Once it's done click on add and it will create two partition EFI and boot partition. Now here is where thing get interesting. We are going to create two partition. Call them partition A and partition B. Uh, the key here is that both partition must be access same size. I am creating 20 GB partition A with the BTRS file system, and uh, and I will create another 20 GB partition for partition B uh, with same BTRS file system. Let's create uh, partition A. Partition A is created. Let's create same partition with access. Uh, but same size of partition A which is 20 GB and here we have let's give it name to partition B and file system uh, is BTRS and click on add our partition are created partition A and partition B lastly we will create home partition uh, so I am giving all the remaining space and setting up uh, uh, to BTRS file system so let's create it. So guys, with these five partition in place, our system is taking shape. Now it's time to save the changes and uh, gparted will create the partition for us. So let's click here and click on apply and it will create uh, all the partition for vanilla OS. All the partitions are now created. Let's move to the installer. And we here we need to assign the required partition to vanilla OS. First, select boot partition that you created earlier. And guys, uh, you need to check the partition name from gparted. In my case, it's 01p5. So I'm gonna select 01p5 for the boot partition. Now uh, let's choose for the root uh, EFI partition. In my case, it's 01p4. So I'm gonna select uh, 01p4 for the EFI partition. And now uh, let's choose the root partition. I'm gonna selecting partition A, uh, which is P6. So, and guys, remember if you choose any other partition with a different size uh, other than partition A, uh, it will throw error. As you can see, it throw error that partition must be exact same size. So uh, select uh, partition B, which is P6. Now moving on to the home partition which is P8, let's select it. Now all the partitions are selected. And remember, uh, swap is not compulsory. If you have 8GB of RAM, you can skip it. But if you have 4GB of RAM, considering creating 4GB partition for swap. Uh, take a moment and double check it. Uh, all the partitions are assigned correctly or not. And confirm the changes. So I'm gonna click on confirm changes. Uh, now uh, we need to create our username and password. Uh, so let me create it. Now confirm all the changes. Uh, and we are way to installing vanilla OS on our system. And guys, uh, click on install it. And guys, installation, dura uh, installation duration may be uh, based on your SSD speed. Uh, it may take uh, 10 to 15 minutes. So I'm gonna fast forward the video to make it short.
the installation is complete now it is asking for reboot our system so go ahead and reboot it so let me reboot it and guys after the reboot remember to remove the usb drive now guys i'm gonna uh, keep pressing f12 to boot the system into the uh, boot option So as you can see, you will uh, we have new boot entry name it Ubuntu, which is actually vanilla OS. To keep things simple, I deleted all the previous boot entry. So let's click on Ubuntu, and it will boot our system into the vanilla OS. For the first time, it may take a bit of time, so be patient. I'm gonna fast forward it. There you have it. We have successfully installed vanilla OS on our system. Congratulations. And guys, uh, keep exploring this immutable file system uh, and its APX file manager. And it is making waves in the tech world. And you have just become part of Vanilla OS experience. Enjoy exploring this fresh take on Linux. And if you have any question or further guidance, feel free to ask. If you really enjoyed this video, uh, then consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching Tech Jarvis.